So you notice here I have this home controller. And in the views directory, by convention, I'm looking for something that has the same name, the home folder. So all the, uh, all the views for the home controller are in the home folder. And not only that, you can see here that I have this index action method, uh, index folder, uh, file, view, that corresponds to the index action method name. So by doing that, we, we can automatically hook up the view to the action method when you just return a view. If you want to change the name, you always have that option. I could say not index, and now I just need to create one called not index. But we're going to follow the conventions because that just kind of keeps things a little easier for you, less uh, repetition. And now what I can do here is do a little bit of razor, say view bag dot, uh, what is it, foo? And when I go to the home page, uh, did I compile? we can see that it shows up. What's it, so what's interesting about this, in case you're wondering, you notice here I didn't define foo anywhere, right? I just said uh, viewbag.whatever equals bar. This is a, uh, in new in MVC3, we have this nice syntactic sugar for view data. So this is actually equivalent to view data of foo equals bar. And in fact, I can change the code like that, hit refresh, and you see it still works. So there's really, on, on one level, there's really no technical benefit to this new syntax, but it does, for a lot of people, make it look cleaner, that you can just use these dynamic properties. And view data is uh, data that you want to send to the view that's sort of uh, maybe extra, extra information apart from your, act, your core model. Now, some people don't use view data at all. They always use a complete view specific or view model. Uh, but it's really a matter of choice and preference what, which one you choose. So let me switch it back. So one other thing I want to show, I'm going to talk about Razor later, but I'll, I'll give a brief little intro. One of the things you'll notice here in this page is if you've ever done web forms, uh, used the web forms view in MVC one or two, there was a lot. There'd be a lot more junk in here. Instead of this little at sign, I would be doing less than percent equals, or in ASP.NET four, less than percent colon, and this sort of thing, right? Where you, every time you start the code nugget, you have to end the code nugget. But with Razor, we got a lot smarter and we made it uh, lighter weight where we could understand the transitions between code and markup. So just to show an example of this, I'm going to uh, create a little for statement. Let's see, for var i equals 0, i less than 5, i plus plus. The ul tag here. So you notice here that a uh, couple things to notice. I use this at sign to transition to code. So I did a line of code. And then I, op whoops, I opened up the block statement with the open curly brace. Now, as you know, with the block statement, you have to close the block at somewhere. And notice here, when I closed the block, I didn't have to tell it that, hey, we're back in code. I didn't have to do that. Why didn't I have to do that? Well, the nice thing is with razors, as I mentioned before, we understand the structure of markup. As long as you're using well-formed markup, we, we, can, we know that, for example, when you start an open tag, you have to close that tag. And after you close that tag, we know, and if you don't start yet another tag, we know that you're back in the code mode, you're in code again, and you just need to close the block. You're now back in code. What this allows is when you're writing these views, um, if you if you tried it, it starts to really just flow out. Like you just don't even think about it. It's just all code, and that was kind of one of the goals that we went with that. Let's get that. All right. So I, I love talking about Razor, and I could totally talk about it for another half hour. But since I have an hour to talk about it later, then I better save it for that.
So let's look at the uh, routing. So I mentioned earlier that uh, when a request comes in, we need to figure out which controller it goes to. So you, you notice here, let me just fill this in. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Set one here and here. So what I'm doing here is I'm attaching to the web server. Ah, there we go. Now let's look at what's happening. So you notice here that the URL that I'm requesting is slash home slash index. Slash home matches the controller name, home. So by default, what we do is we look at that aspect and we append controller and we look for a type that implements iController that matches that part. And then the other part of the URL is index. And you notice here that we have an action method named index. So that's how we match up the URL to what code we're going to run when that URL comes in. Now, it may seem like we're doing that uh, by, uh, by convention. And in a way, we are, but this convention is fully under your control. And it all happens within routing. I keep using the wrong keyboard shortcut. So you notice here in global.asax.cs, I have this method here called register routes. And in here, we have two routes by default. One is an ignore route, and one is uh, the default route. And the thing to note here is that the, the route contains uh, a couple of pieces of information. The important thing here is the URL pattern. What this is, is this tells the route what kind of URLs to match. I'm going to match all three segment URLs. And when I do, I'm going to parse those three segments into three different buckets. One with the name controller, one with the name action, and one with the name ID. And I'm going to hold that information in, in a structure called the route value dictionary. And that becomes really important because that dictionary means something. Uh, for example, the controller value is how we locate the controller class. The action value is how we locate the index. And then the ID is a parameter into your action method. But the other thing to notice here is we have this little weird object, anonymous object here. And this is kind of a, a little trick or a little hack that we do where we take an anonymous object and we treat it like a dictionary. And this value, this uh, particular one is specifying default values. It's saying, so if you didn't specify the controller, use home. If you didn't specify the action, use the index. And if you didn't specify the ID, use this weird URL parameter dot optional. What that means is uh, don't even add ID to the dictionary if it wasn't specified. Because if you didn't have this, it would add maybe an empty string into there. And that might actually mean something different than it not being there in the first place. So I want to make sure that's clear. Uh, okay, there we go. So, so one of the things you can do with routing is you can define your own routes that match up your own way of uh, your own URL structures, however you want them to be. Let's look at, I mentioned passing in parameters into the action method. This part I think is a part I really like about uh, MVC is that it makes it really easy to pass in parameters into your methods. So let's start with a simple one, string ID. And <clears throat> I'm going to change this message to append that ID. So here you can see I have home slash index. I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to pass in this uh, is a test. Oh yeah, that's right. So this is a test. Okay. So you can see here that I'm I'm able to pass in a method by just specifying the uh, the ID portion of the URL, and that is going to match up to the ID parameter of my action method.